example, if you've been by yourself all day, and you didn't do anything wrong that day, mm. when I do my meditation, what should I ask besides to say I'm nothing? You didn't do anything wrong that day, <laughs> then you're probably already walking on water in Shalom. You're a big wally. Because they've been home all day. They were in That's good. <laughs> you were at home all day, you didn't. You weren't uh, lazy, you did all your zikrs, you did all your orads. Make istighfar for yourself always, then istighfar for the family. Because we're, we're making istighfar always as a means in which the power of istighfar, astaghfirullah al-azim wa atubu ilayk. It opens Allah's rahmah by when you ask Allah's forgiveness, Allah says, Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of my generosity and my, my compassion, I'm forgiving you. So if you want Allah's zikr upon you, then you make istighfar. So every time we say, Astaghfirullah al wa tubu alayk, Allah replies with, Bismillah rahman rahim So by washing and istighfar is like a cleansing, Ya Rabbim, cleansing, cleansing. If, if everything is clean off of me today, now I'm asking istighfar from my children, from my community, from my loved ones. And then you become one whom if you're excess positive, you can become a benefit to society. So it's a means of which to clean, clean ourselves and clean all the homes around us. Mm -hmm. And all the people that we love and we care for each other. Mm -hmm. I can answer another question. Someone was asking, during meditation what are different types of zikrs to recite during the meditation? The different types of meditation. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to do a breathing meditation, then you just focus on the breath. You play salawats, make your connection and just breathe for energy and qudra. That you're trying to develop now your breathing, you're trying to also develop the faculty of focusing, which is very difficult for people whose, whose minds are too active. That's why a lot of people in, in, in last days don't like to meditate because the active mind is so wound up and so active they can't really sit and focus on one thing. They're thinking a thousand things at a time. So then this process of sitting for, for that type of meditation is I just want to shut my active mind down, I want to breathe, I want to see myself at the Holy Kaaba in the presence of my shaykh, that I'm with my shaykh, that I want to be at the Kaaba, dress me from the lights of the Kaaba, listen to something so that you don't have waswas in your ear and make sure that you feel the pulse of your hand so that the focus is on the heart and then just breathing and just two, three, four minutes a day of your breathing practices to make sure that you're breathing and able to shut your mind and to focus. Then there's meditation in which you can do with your aurat. Where you sit down, you connect with the shaykh, say, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, you let me to be with your, your pious people and that I want to do my awrah and say that it's not me, I want your blessings and you to do the awrah from the barakah and niyat and intention that you have and I don't know because you know a greater intention than what I would know. And then I sit and do my awrah, ashad, ashad, Also touched on that. Uh, Shaykh, kindly can you address the question about how sound can affect affect thoughts, thoughts are silent. But sound, how sound can affect thoughts. I was thinking maybe salah playing, I don't know. If it's yeah, the, the, it, it, why we don't meditate in silence is because of that, uh, the, the, the danger of shaitan coming through the ear and making waswas. So as soon as you meditate, you're, you're leaving a very open uh, a mic for shaitan. So as soon as you make your tafakkur and you want to contemplate, if you leave the mic open, most likely the tafakkur will be based on his whisperings. Oh, why did your boss say this? Oh, why did it like this? Oh, why like that? That's now an open mic for waswas. And you've stopped everything to focus. Instead of focusing on, on a higher reality, you're just focusing on the waswas now. So many people when they start to meditate they go crazy because they start to hear all the gossipings and listen to all these gossipings. And then they super analyze every single sort of negative issue. So the secret for that was then put salawats. That it's not about to hear anything from your ears, you're going to put salawats to take yourself in a mode of where the angels are praising upon Prophet that I'm in the presence of Prophet in holy Medina, I'm nothing that keep your nazar upon me. 
and I just want to breathe, or I'm going to do my different salawats and my zikrs. So. Someone had asked a question saying, during the meditation, if they're feeling like their ears are burning or heating up, what is that? <laughs> yeah, inshaAllah make sure that you always have the ta'weez on because this is now, you know, a battle in energy. So make sure that you, you started the meditation with wudu, that you have your ta'weez on, that you made your connection and your madad, and the, the rest iftal azawajal. The energy is going to come and you're going to get heated either in your neck, your hands, your feet, your ears. There's going to be an exchange of energy. An energy that you're trying to bring is a positive energy and there's going to be all the negative energy that people have upon themselves. So one's got to go. The positive energy is going to come and the negative energy is not going to try to release very easily. So there is going to be an exchange of energy and heated energies and cold energies. Just if, make sure if yourself is all washed and clean and you have your taweez and you're doing your practices. And it goes along with everything else that we're taught is that when you enter into the energy world and, and this energy training, you have to be hypersensitive to everything. Don't smoke, don't drink, it goes without even saying, don't do crazy things. Because once you open the door to energy and you engage in, in behavior that is, is not to the benefit of your spiritual being, you're now in a dangerous area. Because then shaitan can come big time and attack and, and make your, your life really upside down. Somebody grab a taweez and bought a taweez and then decided he wants to go every night to a nightclub. Of course he's going to have tremendous problems. Because now you're bringing in positive energy, positive beings and taking them into the satanic realm and like making them fight each other. You start seeing the dishes flying in the house and you know, things going all over the place. So you try to say, okay, I'm going to leave the bad to the best of my ability and I want to improve myself towards the good inshallah. Someone had a question about um, placing of the hands and grounding mm -hmm. during meditation. Yeah, visualizing again that there's a tremendous positive light but we have also a tremendous amount of negativity that we collect throughout the day. So that when you're going to be grounding with either hand, you'll do your grounding, that you bring an energy and you're breathing in, you visualize breathing in the positive energy and then you visualize that you're going to be grounding out any type of negativity with the hand. If you're, if you're holding the left hand to feel your heart, then put the right hand onto the ground, breathe in your energy and, and ask to sort of ground all the negativity. See a, a light coming in with every breath and every exhale pushing out any type of darkness or difficulty. Inshallah. What should one do when they slip into deep meditation, sleep during meditation? How to prevent it? They're so deep into meditation. Yeah, that the energy becomes so heavy it actually knocks you out. So that's why in the, in the training the, the meditation was always in an uncomfortable position. As we got older we put a little bit of arthritis in our knees, we can't do. But in, in our training years we were meditating with a bench. So we were always on the knee and they have the little squatting bench where you can sit on your knees and it just supports yourself to be on a position of your knees. The Prophet's teaching was to be uncomfortable. The, the, the hawa and the desires, how to bring the hawa down. So our master Sayyidina Muhammad set the example by sleeping on bamboo. He would sleep in a very uncomfortable material so that when the Sahabi awoke they were very upset to see Prophet is having the marks of these things. He said, we can give you something very luxurious to sleep on. He says, no, it makes it easier for me to wake up from my fajr. So it means that was the teaching for hawa and desire to go down, make things uncomfortable. So if you sit in an uncomfortable position then and have coffee and, and tea or black tea, Grand Shaykh uh, Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dabastani would have 11 cups of black tea before fajr. <laughs> so it means he, he liked it strongly. Yeah. So because of the amount of energy that comes, and the amount of awareness they want to keep in Kawa and coffee was actually developed by the Sufis. 
as a means to pray their tahajjud and their fajr prayers. Huh. So don't meditate on a full stomach, you'll definitely knock out and you'll take away all the barakah of the energy. The energy that's coming to you has to move freely through your system. So you can always eat nicely after your meditation, after the zikr nights, never eat before the zikr if you want to feel the energy otherwise zikr just becomes like a place where you're going to sleep because the body's too, mm -hmm. too, too involved in to digest the food and for you to feel the process and the movement of that energy. But when you enter into a state of hunger into your practices you feel the energy that gives its own himma and excitement that these energies are coming and I'm feeling these energies and, and to benefit from it versus making the self to be dull or not to feel it. So they don't eat before. So should we keep notes of what we see during our meditation? You keep a journal of, of important understandings or if the shaykh is inspiring your heart to, to understand something but don't worry about the world of seeing because that can become very nafsani. You know, you just keep an understanding for yourself and even Imam Ali Salam that I annihilated in my annihilation. It means that in, in every tafakkur and contemplating they'll train higher that annihilate and negate everything. Because if you're sitting there and say, I'm, I'm, I'm meditating and now they're bringing a sword for me, they bring a jup uh, for me, they brought a turban for me, I'm going here, I'm going there. You're now letting your nafs to take over the meditation and the contemplation. Just always telling ourselves, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm not worthy of any of these things, Ya Rabbi let me just to keep the company of my shaykh. And by keeping his nazar upon me, let me just enter an ocean of energy and light. All of Mu Ya Rabbi is energy and light, send me into energy and light until you can reach a place in which you feel energy and lightning coming from every direction and dressing your soul. Everything else to negate, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I don't need that Ya Rabbi, I'm nothing. Thank you very much, I don't know. Because you don't want to be rude in case it really was something, it's a gift. <laughs> um, should we avoid touching people when we are trying to cleanse and build our energy? Did he send it? No, no. <laughs> I think according to Islamic law everybody should avoid touching everybody <laughs> at all, all, all situations inshallah. But no, but to understand that on a serious level is that when we meditate you're, you're entering now into an energy world. And that in itself is a, is a, even some advanced meditation people that don't really get the concept of energy. That uh, everything you build is an electrical field and there are some scientists now that come and say, what's the charge on every cell? Like one, one something percentage of a volt. But you have seven trillion or five trillion of these cells. It's you're a very powerful energy being. If you could harness all that energy, imagine what type of energy would, would come out of a person. And it's not even a battery, it's being made internally by Allah. So it means that love, hate, hasad, these are very strong energy conductors. So once you begin to understand that you meditate and you contemplate, you're building very positive energy fields. So your whole energy field is moving. No doubt that any positive energy is going to conduct negative energy, just very basic. If I put a positive charge, anything negative will be attracted to it. So it's like a light bulb on a dark night, all the mosquitoes come. That's why you don't meditate and open up your energy and then sit in the mall and start to meditate in the mall. You'll now pick up all the negative charges of all the people and all their actions. If that's what you want to do then, then you can do that but it's not recommended. <laughs> so you try to preserve your energy, you preserve it and, and keep it secure by wudu, by wushing and, and, and unnecessarily touching. <laughs> and then uh, uh, part of the meditation would be some people do muhasaba during the meditation. Mm -hmm. So you're saying during the muhas muhasaba 
you realize that you have a lot of jealousy. So how do we fix the jealousy? Yeah, that when you're, <coughs> you, t you take the muhasaba and you start to write all of these issues in our lives and then to understand the sickness is the first step in it. That you, you, when you confront your sickness and say that I have jealousy issues, at least then you get your zikr, your istighfar, your salawats and keep asking Prophet that I know that I'm a jealous person, take this off of my eyes. Take this, this nazar off my eyes, let my eyes to be content with what life Allah has given to me. And then they begin the alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, alhamdulillah wa shukran because when the eye is too hungry it's not content with what Allah has given to you. And then it makes us to be in a difficult situation with Allah So the first level is to, is to identify and most people won't go through their whole life thinking that they have no character defects. But when you point out all the problems and they say, what's the root of that problem? And it must be hasan, I have a jealousy, I can't stand why this person has this and I don't have it. Then we identified it as a huge step that, Ya Rabbi, I have hasan, I have hasan. Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, keep your nazar upon me, Ya Allah, keep your nazar upon me and take this from my heart, take this from my eyes, take this sickness from my eyes and from my heart. Then every salawat and istighfar that we're doing is now directed towards the sickness that we know. And then, Alhamdulillah, wa shukran lillah that Ya Rabbi, I'm happy with what you have given me. I'm razi with what you have. Bi izzatika radiyan, bi qismatika radiyan wa bi izzatika sajidan. Ya Rabbi, I'm happy. When do I come in? It's from do I come in? Bi izzatika, bi qismatika radiyan wa bi izzatika sajidan. That I am, I am radi, I am happy with what you have written for me and I am making my sujood into your, your izzat and your might. I can't change my condition, only you can change Arabic if you see that I need more than, it's only up to you Rabbi, but I'm, I'm radi, I'm ridha with what you have given to me. And then Allah is happy with the servant who is happy with Allah. Someone was asking, uh, what should what should our diet be since we started meditation? What food should one avoid? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a very personal nature of what type of food do you like? <clears throat> try to, to eat less before the meditation, mm -hmm. try to meditate on an empty, empty stomach. I know that everything has an energy. As your practices become stronger, you become more sensitive to the different energies. So Mawlana Shaykh's teaching is that the meat has an energy. Mm. If you eat a lot of chicken, you find yourself to be very picky, 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 picky. You basically take on the characteristic of that which you eat. Mm. So it's better to be like a broccoli than a chicken. <laughs> 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 broccoli doesn't seem like it's harming too many people, but this chicken character, you know, the picky, 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 the Malana Sheikh said that the, the chicken is always looking for a worm. Mm. So basically you take on the energy of all of these creatures that you're mm. eating, the things you're eating. In the Muslim world, I think they eat the lamb because it's a very passive animal. The, the cow is, is a very grazing animal and just likes to eat all day long. Before you know it, you eat too much beef and you're grazing like a cow all day long. So you take on the characteristic and the attribute of the animal that you eat. So then the vegetables, the food, the animals, everything in, in moderation. But try our best not to eat before we meditate, inshallah. Someone was asking, is there any specific meditation or zikrs for during pregnancy? During pregnancy is a very powerful time. There's this tremendous amount of angels, a tremendous secret of creation is entering within the womb. The meditation should be very powerful. Like connecting your heart with the shaykh, connecting with Prophet I'm asking to be dressed from the lights of Holy Qur'an. You may begin to hear the Holy Qur'an being recited to the child. That the Qur'an is recited within the womb to develop the child in its development phases. So the meditation for women could be very positive and very powerful. And med meditation generally by women is, is more powerful than the men because Allah gave them these two openings, because Allah gave within their heart a secret and gave within their womb a secret.
So because of these two secrets, they can reach much faster. And the nature and sensitive nature makes them to be, again, more softer towards the approach of realities, where men have become hardened and become more difficult and more stubborn to reach towards their reality, where they're denying it, denying it, denying it. But because of the sensitivity, that's why in the last days many women can fall prey to Dajjal and the whole system of difficulty. Because they're sensitive in their nature, their energy is easily hijacked. The shaitan can play with their sensitivity and flip all their switches. So the man who's insensitive, he has a harder time shaitan to play with him to that extent. So it goes both ways. And if they're going to meditate and contemplate, they have to build their faith and their practices and understand the energy world and understand how shaitan is playing with them. So. Saidi, can we remove negative and false thoughts, beliefs, and waswas from shaitan that cause fear through muraqaba? Yeah, that's the whole process. Is that shaitan is, is, is gaining access to the ear and to the heart, and that he's trying to overtake the faith of the believer. So, those faculties are the ones that you're going to focus when you're doing the tafakkur. When you're doing the tafakkur, it's such a tremendous power, shaitan doesn't allow it. That as soon as you want to make your connection, that I want to connect my heart, Ya Rabbi, keep me with you, keep me with Prophet keep me with these ulul am, that dress your light upon me, dress your nazar upon me. Then they begin to teach you all the th different things that you're supposed to do, how to keep your wudu, how to make your salawats, how to keep the house with all these taweezes of Qur'an and, and all these beautiful calligraphies, so that to fortify and sanctify yourselves. As you build your energy, the more powerful your energy becomes, the more it pushes away these devils and these bad uh, energies, pushes them to stay further away by the strength of the, the energy that you're building within the heart. So it's important to build that energy and to begin to push these things away. But not for a blink of an eye, Prophet said, no, leave me to my nafs for a blink of an eye. So don't think for a moment. The shaitan's not waiting to attack, that oh, he's gone away. Never no. He's waiting for a mistake. People say, Marshall, you're answering so many answers. In one question, you're answering many other questions. <laughs> Bless you, forgive me, inshallah, with that we will we'll keep it fresh mm -hmm. until next week. Warahmatullahi Muhammad and Mustafa, Obasir Suri, Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.